Hi, in this tutorial video I'd like to show you how to strip down an Erie 2400 series valve body. So the valve comes in two parts, the valve front and the valve body. The valve front contains the electronic side of things and the valve body is the part that deals with the water. Mainly for ease of making the video, I'm going to remove the valve front from the valve body. You don't have to do this, but if you are going to, it's a really good idea to make sure that the valve front is in service mode before proceeding. If you've got the 2400 TS model, in other words the timed model as opposed to the metered model, then this is what the display should look like with the valve in service mode. It will be telling the time of day and how many days are remaining until the next regeneration is due. If you've got the 2400 VS model, in other words the metered valve as opposed to the timed valve, then the display will look a bit more like this with the valve in service mode. It will say the time of day, how many litres are left till the next regeneration is due. And depending on the age of your valve, it might also be saying how much water has been through the valve and how much water is going through the valve at the moment. That does vary slightly depending on the age of your valve. Before you go any further, don't forget to isolate the water supply. and release the pressure in the system by opening a cold tap. Having made sure that the valve front is in service mode, it can now be easily separated from the valve body by undoing and removing the two retaining screws. Then it should just pull away. Also, mainly for ease of making the video, I'm going to remove the valve body from the vessel. But you don't have to do this in order to gain access to the internal components of the valve body that we're going to be looking at today. In order to gain access to the inside of the valve body, you're first going to need to remove the six bolts that hold on the valve cover. Once you've done that, you can lift the valve cover off and it's likely that some of the internal components will come away with it. But if they don't, just pick them out of the valve body until you can see this green disc. That's the seal disc. Whether or not some of the components do come away with the valve cover, these are the components that you should find in the valve body above the green seal disc. So there's the valve cover itself which has a sealing rubber o-ring around the outside make sure you don't lose that. It also has a Teflon o-ring inside here. Sometimes you might find that the Teflon o-ring has remained in place here on top of the rotor cam. But usually you will find that it's here inside the valve cover. Next is this polyethylene washer, which it's really easy to lose, especially if your valve is full of iron oxide or whatever. So keep an eye out for that. Then comes the worm gear.
the rotor cam. and the rotor plate. The green seal disc can easily be removed with a pair of long nose pliers. Next comes the insert plate. and the rubber gasket this is the injector this valve is fitted with a red one but they do come in other colours and again that can be removed with a pair of long nose pliers and right in the bottom of the valve here float valve and this little spring which is something that it's really easy to lose if you're not careful. The last thing that I'm going to remove from the valve body is the worm drive shaft which is done by unscrewing this nut and then withdrawing the shaft and the worm drive shaft has this little Teflon washer on the end which is another thing that it's easy to lose if you're not careful. And there you have your stripped down Erie 2400 series valve body. Next time I'll show you how to rebuild it and thanks for watching.